to the YBS years. The opening video was Vita Lux, taken from the live gala concert in Kekrada at the European Championships. The vocal soloist was the wonderful Helen Massey, who did tour around with us a lot in those days. She had won the BBC Young Choral Singer of the Year in 1996, and she was a fabulous asset to us at the time. Today's video is us, again, discussing some of the wonderful memories we had, but more importantly, why it was fabulous to play in this band. Please stay tuned to the end where you will hear another one of our wonderful soloists feature on a video that I doubt you'll have seen before. I hope you enjoy and it's great to see you all again. What was the best thing about playing in the band for you? For me personally, it was sort of a very humbling experience to sort of play a second horn. Um, when I first joined the band, it wasn't a particularly brilliant band. It was all right. But then obviously Dave took over. Um, but shortly before Dave took over, a lot of people forget that the first contest that YBS ever did, we came, we came uh, second to last and got dropped into the Grand Shield, which wasn't the best of starts. Uh, and it then took us two years to get back into the British Open and then a further three years or three and a half years it was before we actually won it. So that was that was something that I was particularly um, proud of and it you know, gives you good feelings but, but also the, the not only the band and the service but the particular for me the particular uh, section that I, that I was part of with yourself Shona and obviously the other two guys um, Stuart and, and Ewan who was sadly no longer with us and um, we had a we had a fantastic camaraderie between the section um, and it was, a, it was a great thing to be part of for, uh, for quite some time. The best thing about being in the band started in the first year that I, I got there which I remember fairly well but the one thing I do remember is the honesty of Dave. It completely changed. I, I wasn't a particularly good player in them days when I look back. Um, still not actually but um, the first rehearsal I was I was doing a little bit of a warm up and that and Dave came up to me and said uh, yeah it's good legato side but your articulation is shit. and he passed me um, he passed me a mouthpiece he went you need to put that in a mouthpiece which I play on today and I tell you what with with obviously working at it as well but with that particular mouthpiece and I'm not a mouthpiece bloody you know, gizoid, but absolutely, he nailed it. He nailed it. He's honest. He's true. He's truthful, and and you don't you don't seem to get that um, everywhere. And and that for me was just just amazing, you know. And I think also it's not even just the fact it's the truth; it's the fact that he knows and he's he, exactly he, he, he gets it. He just has to listen, and that's it. He knows exactly what to do and what to say. People don't yeah. have that um, skill and that ability, do they? And that no, I've learned more about brass playing from Dave King than anyone ever. Amazing. Yeah, well, the best the best thing for me about playing in YBS was uh, when I joined in '97. I was 47 years old, right? And it was daunting because uh, you were the, at that time you were the uh, European champions in '97, and going into a band room full of all these all these pretty young things, you know, Sean and Maggie and, <laughs> and and all the rest of them, you know what I mean? But but the accent on the young people, which actually gave me a second lease of playing life, if you like, which were, I mean, totally amazing to me, you know, Aww, that's, that's, that's the best thing for me. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah. Well, for, for, I know for, it actually resurrected my, my career. Yeah, so similar to Simon, really, he said, um, you know, one of his most memorable moments was first rehearsal in the band. And I'll never forget coming up with uh, with Big Gav because we both lived in North Wales at the time. So we had to travel, you know, best part of two and a half hours each way to rehearsal. And, you know, Gav sort of just warning me what to expect. And, you know, you can you can expect all you like, but it's never going to be exactly true sort of thing. And uh, just the first rehearsal, I, I remember Dave sitting down next to me and uh, he just said, the best players in the world aren't necessarily the best players. They just know when to duck and dive, when to play, when not to play. And I just thought, well, you know, that's 
it make, makes sense. You know, you don't have to play everything. You just play to your strengths. And I think, you know, going back to why the band was so good, I think everybody knew their own strengths. Everybody knew their own weaknesses. And we kind of fed off that, if you like. You know, Stuart Lingard next to me, um, you know, fantastic player, but he, he wasn't the best counter. So that, that's where I came in. I just looked after him. I made sure he could counter, made sure he came in the right place when he had to. You know, so I think that was, a, a you know, a, a very, very memorable thing for me uh yeah the best thing for me was that uh, and it's been mentioned before i think pete was the first one to say it about friends um it was an activity i could do with all my mates that's where everyone was i looked forward to going there because you you guys were all there uh it was just an amazing atmosphere to be part of um friends friendships that have lasted all these years like even for example chris Starr, he's coming over with his family staying here this summer if everything clears up but that's the plan i've been in touch with those uh, meet met up with those people loads of times over the years, um, sharing lifts. Uh, I remember Shona, when I first joined the band, I used to come to your flat and then you'd drive because I wasn't driving at the time. Uh, and then later on, we'd share rides with everyone. I used to go with John Davis. Good Lord, I went with, on so many car journeys with John and learned so much stuff there. That was, that was an education. Um, <laughs> but yeah, the Tom bottom of it is friendships. That, that was, that's, that's the main thing about this. It, it was just amazing to share this with, with friends. For me, um, it was the, the people I played, the, the playing um, and learning from those players. I never forget, uh, there's two, two moments, one with Morgan and one with Pete. Um, when I played in the band, I first came to the band, there was two things I, I couldn't do. I couldn't play quiet. And, um, and then I remember Morgan coming up to me and I would played something. It was either something in a piece in the band or a solo or something. And him basically saying to me, oh, have you ever thought about, you know, how you finish the, the phrase? Because it's just as important as the, the rest of it that you play. And I was like, what are you on about? And then he would sort of he explained it to me. And from that point on, I've always thought about how I finished my last note and the sound that I had from that and it was those things that I'd never even thought of and then being forced to play really quiet and then when for me the 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 biggest thing for me is is Pete Roberts just he he has been my um inspiration as a player and as a person how to to somebody how to behave how to behave on um uh, behind the scenes how to behave in a band um I knew if Pete looked at me and gave me a wink I'd nailed it. It didn't happen lots and lots of times, but when it actually happened, it really meant something. So I'd play something, I'd look over at the band and he's like, you think, oh, really done good today. That's brilliant. Um, so for me, he was probably, <laughs> thanks Pete, one of the biggest influences ever for me, playing in someone you talk about you and us youngsters, well, us having you there was just the most stabilizing influence um, musically, but personally as well in the band. You were such a huge support and influence to someone like me who was so young and um, quite uh, insecure about lots of things, especially my playing at, th at that time. And you, you just really helped me with that. So that was mine. Oh, I remember really about the best thing about being in it is that, that buzz you get, you know, when you do play well or, or when the ensemble around you is, is as good as what we had. Um, just being inside that bubble of sound and, you know, that performance, there's, there's nothing like it, you know, when, when you've got those goose pimples and the hair stand up on your, on your arms and, you know, and, and we are very fortunate we had so many of those, you know. Uh, a lot of bands... They might get it once, once a year, whatever, you know, if they're lucky, they get a, that odd performance. But like somebody said earlier, you know, we, we were so consistent that that feeling came often and often, didn't it? And uh, yeah. when, when you didn't get that, maybe you're not playing as well as you should or whatever, you know, but that was very rare, you know, um, and that buzz, there's nothing like it. So it was great. Yeah, and I think you, you, I don't know about you guys, I listen to recordings all the time because I just, it's my inspiration to go back and listen to all our recordings. But my favorite ones are the all the live ones from the Europeans, the Kings of Europe. And I listened to that like so many times. And this morning when I was getting ready, I listened, I had how many, how many music's my, Harmony Music and Talus are my top two, they're my favourites. And I remember um, coming off the stage from Munich, Harmony Music, and sobbing because I had messed up on the cadenza and it was just like, it was literally the end of the world for me. And going, we all went to some, um, was it like a Bavarian 
place or something like beer place or something I don't know I've just got this memory of me just being inconsolable um, and and then I listen back to it now and I'm like so what it was like a few split notes it doesn't matter the actual performance itself is just the most oh my god it's the most exciting thing I think I've ever heard when I listen to it I still remember being in that hall playing every single note and 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 everything even like the rubbish ones um uh, but it's just like you say that pressure or that thing where you maybe thought you didn't play very well was still better than everything else and everyone else that existed at the time so yeah well I think really echoing what we said before about the I mean the sections of the band I mean mine particularly when when we had Obviously, when Mike eventually went on to baritone. Well, <laughs> 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 uh, then we had, when we had Stuart and Margie and Mike, I mean, that, that role for me was just fantastic. I mean, I've never, ever played in a, a section like that. And again, everyone, it's just the sound that we made and, and everything together. You know, I mean, obviously, the Dave thing, I mean, I'd, I'd, I'd known Dave a long time before YBS as well, you know. So, But, but it's the fact of how we pushed you as well. I mean, it, it, it's a bit different with me. I mean, he used to challenge you quite a lot, which which made me play better, which I'm sure he did with a lot of us. You know, he just really pushed you all the time. Um, and sometimes, you you know, you wanted to throw the euphonium at him, you know, <laughs> on a few occasions. But I think it, that just made me play better. And, yeah. and I'm sure we all had them moments, you know. But, I mean, it was that specialness of what he had and how he pushed you, how he knew how to sort of push your buttons when he needed to do and when not to do and all that sort of, and the support he gave you, but obviously the band as well, we such great players, you know, and it was just a joy to play with. You know? Yeah, and he had that um, level of knowledge about us as people, didn't he? He knew who to say to who and who yeah. not. Like, Pete Roberts never got told off, ever. The whole no. time I played in that band, ever. Not <laughs> once did he get told off. Um, um, but lots of us, we did get told off. Regularly, yes. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Brilliant. Okay, that's fantastic. Thank you. You can look stunned, Pete, but it's the truth. The best thing for being in the band for me was having the opportunity to get up north and play with, you know, one of the best bands at the time. I mean, he was only 18 in, in 94. But I studied, I'd, I'd worked, I'd listened to Dave's work a lot at um, Black Dyke with Essence of Time and George Lloyd CE. And I'd sort of internal, as a young aspiring cornet player with Gus, I'd, um, I'd internalised all of it. So to then have the opportunity to work with Dave was perfect for me because I'd already I was like a sort of already a following for, for that style you know I already sort of had it in the ear um, but to have that performance opportunity is not only to work with Dave but to to have you know to work with a band that level of detail which was you didn't find that in other bands fairies were incredibly good in at that particular time as well so there was some fine playing there um, but really it was just the opportunity to work with that amount of talent and Dave, and then what a great camaraderie as well.
Thank <laughs> you. 